Why do you think Christians put their faith in Jesus? Why don't we put our faith in Muhammad? Why don't we put our faith in Buddha? Why don't we put our faith in Michael Jackson? Why do Christians choose Jesus Christ alone? What do you think? I'll tell you why it is. Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Do you know any man, any woman in all of history who's risen from the grave? Do you know anyone who's ever beaten their grave? No one has, have they? And I'll tell you something, if you died, and then three days later came back from the grave, I'd listen so carefully to what you have to say. And that's why we follow Jesus, because he said, I'll die, and on the third day I'll rise again. And he did it. He really did do it. What goes through your mind is I tell you that I'm telling you I trust in Jesus, because he's beaten the grave. You're smiling at me, you're sticking your tongue at me. Tell me why, why, why do you not believe in that? Why do you think that's a silly message? know this, you've got a grave, your grave is waiting for you, 10 out of 10 people die, and every single one of us is on the Titanic, it's called planet Earth, this ship is going down, and when you are plunged into the icy cold waters of death, I need to know, where will you go, heaven or hell, Jesus doesn't want anyone to go to hell, but if you reject him, if you say I don't want you Jesus Christ, then you will spend all eternity apart, God accepts all of us, we just have to my question, will you come to the Saviour who opened his arms wide when he died on that cross, welcoming all sinners in? Will you come to the Saviour who rose from the dead and give hope to dying men? Have a guess at what football team I support. Anybody, any ideas? You sir, what, what football team, what, what kind of fan do I look like? Do I look like a Liverpool fan? Yeah. Do I look like an Everton fan? Yeah. Do you think I'm a Liverpool fan? Well, you've got the right colour, but... Uh, You've got the wrong team, I'm afraid. I'm a Man United fan. <laughs> and now a lot of people are going to just switch off, aren't they, straight away? Well, the reason I've, I've worn this shirt today is because it's got somebody's name on the back. Anybody see that? Anybody heard of this guy? World's greatest footballer at the moment in time, Cristiano Ronaldo. When we signed Ronaldo, a lot of United fans thought, this is it, he's the saviour. He's going to come, he's going to rescue us, he's going to turn our rubbish team into a great team. Ronaldo is going to have the answer. He's going to be banging yours left, right, centre, hat tricks every week. And that's what we thought. And did it happen, sir? Did it happen? No, it didn't. It was a massive disappointment. You know, he, he wasn't the saviour that we thought he would be. Anybody want to have a guess at what job I do? Any ideas? Anybody? You, madam, what do you think I do? What do I look like? What do I look like? You, sir, what kind of job do you reckon I do? Have a guess. What, what kind of job? Plumber, good guess, not quite. My name's Sparks, but I make a good electrician. I'm actually uh, a teacher. And um, there's one thing that I've noticed being a teacher is that whenever you've got to sort out a problem between two kids, you've always got this situation where the one person who's done something wrong and finds out that they're in trouble from the teacher, they hate saying sorry. You know, they'll, they'll admit what they've done and it's like, right, okay, now you need to say sorry to Jimmy. And like, you don't want to. I don't want to say sorry. And you're trying to get a sorry out of them. It's an absolute nightmare to get them to just admit they've done wrong and say, I am sorry. But eventually you get there in the end. And that word sorry, it's like, it seems to be the hardest word. I know I'm quoting Elton John here, apologies for that. But it is, it seems to be the hardest word. Sorry, doesn't it? Sorry seems to be the hardest word. And you know, sometimes that's just all people want to hear. You know, you see, uh, marriages break down and the, the couple are sat opposite the table to each other and sorting out finances. But really, it's, the money's irrelevant largely. What they want to hear is just a sorry. I'm sorry for the way I confused you. I'm sorry for that affair. I'm sorry. That's what people want to hear. But you know, I saw something on a, uh, on a documentary channel the other week and I was amazed. And it was the, the trials that went took place uh, with the Nazi war criminals. And uh, there was Jews out there who'd been in those concentration camps and all they wanted to see, they, they weren't interested in so much the sentence that was meted out on these people. They just wanted to look them in the eye and for them to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the Holocaust, I'm sorry for all those lives that we, we slaughtered. Sorry is such a powerful word. And do you know that one word, that one word sorry can get you into the kingdom of heaven today. That one word, just saying sorry before God, because we have all offended God. And if you want to be friends with somebody, and you've offended someone, you've got to say sorry, haven't you? Well, it works, works the same with God. You've got to say sorry to God for the things that you've done wrong. And every single one of us 
has done something wrong, haven't we? Except this fella here. Have you, have you ever done anything wrong, sir? Sorry? Have you ever done anything wrong? No, you see, I knew it. I told you, didn't I? Just say. I know that guy's probably not there for Well, he's just done something wrong right there straight away because he's just lied. We all know he's done something wrong. Every single person in the world has done something wrong. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Every single one of us. The Bible just lies. The absolute truth is the word of God. So we've all done things wrong if we're going to honestly, openly admit it. So for that reason, we need to say sorry to God. We've got to come before God and say that we are sorry for our sins. And do you know when we say sorry to God? He for We're on the streets of Lancaster and the word of God is going out. Uh, I've already been the warm-up act, so it's over to Joe Kirby now. Well, uh, a very good afternoon to you people of Lancaster. Now, I, it's a cold day, let's be honest. It's very cold. We've had Storm Eunice, we've had Storm Dudley, we've had all kinds of storms. And I want you right now to give me some hope on a cold day like today. What hope could you give me today? Give me some hope. What might you say to me? Someone's give me a nice smile. What, what would be some hope? That's a very lovely smile. Thank you. Yes. Pardon? I'm all smiling at you. All right. Well, I, I, I was interpreting that as a smile. Thank you. Uh, yeah. We've got lots of joy today. Yeah. What would be some hope? Yeah. This one wants to push me off the ladder. Okay. We've got some pleasant people here today in Lancaster. I'm not even here one minute. <laughs> but I'm asking you today, what would be some hope that you could give me? I'll give you some really good news. Did you know this? You and I have messed up. Do you agree with that? We've made a mess at life. We have. You, you're, you're not in your head. We have. We've made a mess. But here's my hope. God loves messed up people. Even though we've broken God's law, even though we've broken pretty much all of the Ten Commandments, Jesus Christ, God's Son, came into this world and he was nailed to a cross so that we might be forgiven. What goes through your mind as I tell you that? That Jesus died on a cross for you. What are you thinking of when I say that to you? Does that put a smile on your face? Or do you think it's a load of nonsense? What goes through your mind? If I was to ask you, how do I get to heaven? What would your answer be? Over to you now, people of Lancaster. If I asked you, how do I get to heaven? What would your answer be? Someone give me an answer now. How do I get to heaven? What do you think? Girls, what do you think? How do I get to heaven? You need to do what, sorry? die first. Yeah, that's true, this man's right. Well, you do need to die first, yeah, unless Jesus comes again. Guys, I'm asking you today, how do I get to heaven? What would you say to that? What does a person need to do to get to heaven? I wonder if you Maybe you need a ladder, but I'm going down to earth. I'm going down to hell, they won't let me. Why'd you say that, madam? Why'd you say you're going downstairs? You swear too much. Well, Jesus can forgive your swear words. Jesus, hey, I'll tell you, before I was a Christian, I had a very limited vocabulary, you know, I spoke a lot of Latin if you like. And Jesus can change you when he comes into your life. He can take away your swear words. He can take away your anger. He can take away your lust, your pride. It doesn't mean we're perfect, we still mess up. But Jesus can give you a new heart and he can change you. Uh, this lady said to me, I must stand on a ladder to get to heaven. No ladder on earth will ever reach to heaven. In fact, you might remember in the Bible, have you heard of the Tower of Babel? If I say you're drunk and you're babbling along, it's, it's, it's a kind of, the same kind of thing, you know, there's a men, there was men back in the Bible and they built a tower to try and reach to God, saying, we'll climb to God. And God destroyed that tower and showed them there's no way to get to God through building right, towers, through building something. things. We build big skyscrapers, don't we? We big, build big buildings thinking we can reach God. And yet God looks at us and sees, actually, you can't reach me that way. There is only one way to get to God. Do you know what it is? Through the cross of Jesus Christ. That's the only way to get to God. And on that cross, Jesus Christ took all of your sin, your lies, your blasphemy, your hatred. He was nailed there on that cross. You know they plucked out his beard? You know they smashed the crown of thorns into his skull? You know they smashed uh, nails through his hands and his feet? He was spat on, he was broken on that cross and he was beaten there so that you and I might be forgiven. On the cross, he took all the ugliness of our sins so that you and I could be forgiven. And I'm asking you today, what will you do with that message? You're smiling, sir. Why are you smiling? Let me ask you, what's that big smile for of me today? What do you think when I tell you Jesus died for you? Guys, what do you think of that? What do you think when I tell you that the way is open because Jesus died on the cross? This man's smiling at me. What do you think about the Bible, sir? A bit overrated. Why do you say it's overrated? I think it's underrated, sir. 
There's one reason why it's the best selling book in the world. Much better than Harry Potter, much better than the Twilight series. I, the Bible has got truth in it and it's living. A bit like a sat nav. You know what the Bible's like? It's like a sat nav. You know where, when you put on your sat nav, the sat nav will find out exactly where you are. When you open the Bible, it will find you where you are. And that's a challenge to anyone going by today. Open the Bible and see where it finds you today. Now, I do wonder, in Lancaster, are there any atheists today? You're an atheist. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Man. You believe in God? Are you going to heaven, sir? Probably. What, a few bad things, sir. what, what bad things? What do you mean would stop you from getting into heaven? Smoking weed would get. Come on, talk to me, lad. You've got to pray. Come and talk to me. Come and talk to me, lad. Come on. Don't be shy. I'll tell you how to get into heaven. It's through Jesus Christ alone. And that's the message that we're out here today to tell you, okay? Here's a big thing. Why do you think Christians put their faith in Michael Jackson. Why do Christians choose Jesus Christ alone? What do you think? I'll tell you why it is. Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Do you know any man, any woman in all of history who's risen from the grave? Do you know anyone who's ever beaten their grave? No one has, have they? And I'll tell you something, if you died and then three days later came back from the grave, I'd listen so carefully to what you have to say. And that's why we follow Jesus, because he said, I'll die and on the third day I'll rise again. Did it? He really did do it. What goes through your mind as I tell you that I'm telling you I trust in Jesus because he's beaten the grave. You're smiling at me, sticking a tongue at me. Tell me why, why, why do you not believe in that? Why do you think that's a silly message? It's a message of hope, and we need that hope because I tell you something, I don't want to scare anyone today. Did you know this? You've got a grave. Your grave is waiting for you. Ten out of ten people die, and every single one of us is on the Titanic. It's called planet Earth. This ship is going down. And when you are plunged into the icy cold waters of death, I need to know, where will you go? Heaven or hell? Jesus doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But if you reject him, if you say, I don't want you, Jesus Christ, then you'll spend all eternity in God accepts all 